Hello. 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 One, two, three. Hello. Yeah, I thought you forgot me there for a second. <laughs> we just need the light that's in front of you. Oh, right. I forgot. Your pill requirements. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Art Hustle Gallery of Conversation. Yeah. The gestalt psychiatrist of the 70s in California would say, trying is lying. It's always, <laughs> oh, I like I, that. I used to always tell that to my students because you say, well, people say, well, I'll try to get to your party. Here's what that says. Which, which means you're not really going to. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah. To. It's, it's funny. That is very true because somebody will say to me, I'll ask someone to do something, you know, and they'll be like, I don't know. I'll think about it. And I'll be like, that means a no. If you say, I don't know, yeah. I'll think about it, which means and a no. And I have to tell us the students and say, well, I'll try to do better. No, you, no, no. You know what I'm saying? No, you're not going to try. Yeah. It's either you're either gonna, do yeah, or yeah. don't. You're, you're going to do it. better or you're not going to do better. Yeah, okay? do or don't, right? Yeah. You're going to do my homework. You're going to do my essay or you're not going to do my essay. Yeah. Tell me you're going to try to do my Try. Essay. There's no try. I'm going to yeah. try to. Right. Uh, and so, like, so they would look at me like, okay, he got me. <laughs> He got me. <laughs> it's like trying to drive a car. You're either going to drive the car or you're not going to. You're going to sit there right. in the parking lot and you try right. it. You know, right. Do or don't. I love it. See, there's lessons in even the random conversations we have. <laughs> well, that's what I'm saying. You know, it's, and it, but I think that dealing with kids, I kind of said, hey, look, you know, I may like you. I may, you know, but you want the truth. Uh, you're yeah. telling me. What you're telling me is you're not going to do it. And now the issue is why are you, I mean, you're lying to me. You don't even realize you're lying to me. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're, lying, is, you're lying to yourself, and then and now lying you're lying to, to me, and yeah. I'm going to catch you. Why? On it. I mean, so now the issue to me is let's access why you why? feel the need to say I'm trying. Why aren't you going to? Why do, do you it? not want to do it? That's right. Yeah. That's yeah, I love it. See, there's always intellectual, philosophical like revelations yeah. we have in all of our conversations. Uh, well, that's it. That's why I enjoy doing them. In fact, that's why I enjoy it. doing. It. I love these philosophical questions. Yeah. And well, <clears throat> I was so bummed out about it. I was bummed out. Uh, all yesterday afternoon and evening. I yeah. was bummed out this morning. Yeah. Uh, I happened to call Kruge this morning because I hadn't talked to him. Oh, yeah. How I hadn't talked doing? to him in almost two months. Wow. And it's funny. And it's funny. I said to him, and we had a, we had a great conversation about memory loss. Memory loss. Yes. And um, uh, and how I said to him, uh, I may mean, disc discuss it when we talk about traveling, but. Uh, I happened to mention Puerto Rico. I had my first trip out of the continental United States. I was 20 years old and I went mm -hmm, to mm -hmm. go to Puerto Rico. I'm there for like a week. Yeah. Uh, it was my, my boss at the time paid for my round, round trip airfare. But I was supposed to go there and look, look for places for the putting a new, like I'd say, maybe open up a new surf shop down there. Yeah. I only remember my first night where I slept. I slept at the, uh, at the sister of a, of a surfer acquaintance. We weren't even close, but he said, mm -hmm. hey, my mm -hmm. sister's down there. The only good news was she was a hot steaming babe with some bod. <laughs> However, her boyfriend I was. She ends into hot steaming babe. <laughs> yeah, but the, and she was very, and she let me sleep there one night. Of course, I meet her boyfriend, who's a, basically a, a Puerto Rican gang member. Gang oh, member. that's funny. I thought, I thought he was going to slip my throat, but that's another story. It worked, <laughs> out. it worked out okay. But the rest of the week, I don't remember except one night I slept under almond trees and got pelted with almond pods. Oh my but God. Beyond those two nights, I don't know where I slept those the, while I was there. Really? I have, no, I have no memory of where I slept. Really? And that's odd because I had no, didn't sleep in a hotel. I had no money. I mean, I went there too with like, again, uh, with very little money in my pocket. I don't know what I was thinking. I didn't have a credit card. Really? Yeah. I did shit when I was younger, Linda. I Even I can't believe I did it. I mean, they, I think now the, the, the older, wiser, richer person that I am, <laughs> I just had, I had... I had brass balls the size of. Well, I mean, balls. like that's the whole purpose of being young. You feel like you are invincible. Well, that's true, and that you know what you'll you'll work it out as you need to. Yeah, so, I mean that's the essence of being young, right? Yeah. You well, okay. Here's what we're gonna Just do. To do all your crazy shit when you're well, young. Let's, let's let's get we can get to some of this stuff here. Let me, first of all, this shirt there's a lot of pink in it. Um, I know I didn't wear the shirt yet. Because no, you have not. This is the first time I'm seeing it. I love and, it. And my pink is kind of matching your hair. I know. <laughs> so there. Okay. So let us begin. All right. Welcome to the Art and Hustle Gallery of Conversations. Welcome back here. Captain, Schiavo, mentor, professor, guru of my life and newly adopted stepfather. <laughs> <laughs> 
I am so proud and happy. And proud to see you have gained a new stepdaughter. Hey, my pleasure. My pleasure. So welcome. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, you know, it was funny. I, instead of going on a rant about politics and the situation in which we find ourselves in this country. Let's think about something more positive. Well, here's the thing. You know, last episode, the last podcast we did last week, I talked about uh, Joseph Campbell and I talked about mythology and about all kinds of stuff. And the real theme of, of that, as I recall, was that it's 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 not the destination, it's the journey. Yeah. It's very much, I mean, the Hindus have always believed that. And of course, unfortunately, in our culture, American culture, I think that that gets lost for a lot of people that somehow yeah. they're striving, striving. They have these goals. They think mm-hmm. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yeah. Uh, I have to be productive. Mm-hmm. Uh, I have to get married and have kids. And you know, those, these are all things that those are destinations yeah. that are in their yeah. lives. They're, they're, they're personal or familial destinations. They have to get to those goals. Yeah. Right? The goals. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I had them to, I think I, one of the reasons why I got married the first time I had, there was a sense of me in my late twenties that somehow uh, I, sh- I probably should get married. I wouldn't yeah. really want to, I didn't, but I just said, you know what? I think maybe, but I it's wasn't, time. I didn't want to have kids, you know? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it was a whole, it was, I was just, there was a part of my life that I thought I was together and odd, oddly enough, in retrospect, I realized how not together I was. Yeah. But I was, what I, what I thought, I was—I mean, it was cockiness and arrogance on my part, mm-hmm. okay, and also uh, a real lack. I thought I was—I knew I was smart, but I was lacking a certain kind of wisdom. I thought. Mm-hmm. Now thinking back, okay. Yeah, yeah. What kind of wisdom do you think you didn't have? Well, I didn't have the wisdom to realize that you know what you, you, you're making decisions and it's kind of willy nilly. Uh, you don't have enough money really to get married, and you don't have. Uh, you don't want to have kids and and uh, you kind of feeling that maybe somehow you're maybe might be missing out on something, but I mm-hmm. wasn't missing out on something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So uh, and it was a mistake and I, I took all. Yeah. Yeah. All... Do you think you were still selfish at that point? Oh, no question about it. Yeah. No question about it. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I was definitely selfish. I always tell the story of it. Yeah, you know, I had my horse at the time, and my horse needed yeah. a winter coat, and then my wife needed a winter coat. The horse got the winter <laughs> who got coat. The, who got the winter yeah, coat? Yeah. The horse. I mean, I mean that yeah. shows you how, what a terrible attitude I had about being a husband. And, you know, yeah. that, yeah. the night wasn't that I didn't love her. It was the fact that, well, look, this ho- this is a horse for whom, it's an animal for whom I'm responsible. And you're eating, you got a roof over your head, you, you know, yeah. you're not starving, and uh, yeah. take care of the horse, you know. So, <laughs> so, but... <laughs> But I think what I want to talk about is this thing about, you know, it's not the, it's not the destination, it's the uh, journey, the journey. but that brings me to talking about yeah. international travel. Mm-hmm. One of the problems, I think, that's endemic to this culture, this country, m- the majority of Americans do not travel internationally. Yeah. Okay? A, most of the time they can't afford it. Uh, so as a consequence, you know, they're, they're you know, they, they, that's out. Uh, they, they had to save up for months and years to take their kids to Disney World, for example. You know, that's a big deal. It's mm-hmm. expensive, you know, whatever. But, uh, and as a consequence, we also have a, that it helps, it, it makes people more insular in this country than they really should be. You know, mm-hmm. when you go to Europe, you, you, you smack in the face with the fact that most Europeans speak anywhere from three to six languages why well their countries are smaller uh, they can take a train to the next country in a couple hours there you know so they can go in fact even england they can take a ferry boom they're in france and then they go to france they can take a train to wherever they want in europe and you know yeah. short, short plane hops i mean uh, a lot of british i knew knew french because they spent time in france right? they'll go there for the weekend you know yeah 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 so um and of course i did a a lot of international travel i started mm-hmm. Uh, bef- well before I met my present wife um, and uh, together over the years we've been married now 45 years and certainly I would say the last we started traveling pretty much from the get-go but I would say out of 45 years we've been traveling internationally uh, a couple of times a year mm-hmm. for 40 years mm-hmm. okay. yeah and uh, for example I've had at, at last count I think we had 14 
riverboat cruises. Wow. Up, yeah, up and down like the, the the Seine and the the Rhine and the and the, you know, God, you name them. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, the Danube, and consequently, you know, we stopped in these different cities and these different countries all along the way. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll give you a perfect example. Uh, the first the first riverboat cruise we took. Okay. And the reason why we started the riverboat cruises, we had taken other cruises before, mm -hmm. ocean cruises, but yeah. she had her, her she had a, had a heart attack. It was, the good news is it was a, it was what they call a perfect heart attack where it, it was, it did no damage. Wow. And it gave her a warning. She had to have stents put in and everything else, wow. but it didn't kill her, didn't hurt her. Yeah. But when, and she thought she'd never travel again because she, she got, you know, like a lot of people have a heart attack like that if they go, hey, I'm, you know. My life is over and I'm, yeah. you, they get depressed, they get you know, fearful. Yeah. Her doctor said, hey, he said, her cardiologist, are you kidding me? He said, they have better cardiology units in Europe than we have here. He wow. said, you, yeah, he said, you can go to, you could go to these different wow. countries. Man, they, the they're great. So, so, yeah. so if you're on a, on a ship, what they're going to do is, and you have a heart attack, they're going to ship you off. They're going to get you to the first decent hospital. In the in, in the you know that's in their nearby city yeah. so it's all over europe they just do it you know believe me and, and they were also and this is true a lot of the stuff in europe and in other countries are farther ahead of us in terms of medical technology because they don't have as many impediments to new you know technology here you have, yeah, to, have yeah. to go to the fda and this and that and you know it's a, it's a different ball game now again this country they try to make sure people are safe and by the same token in the process, people can die until they get get their agreements and get these patents and get the things you know worked out. So anyway, so we go. And the first trip we took was the with the longest. Um, I, we've never seen a an itinerary longer than the one we took. It was three weeks on the ship. Really? Wow. Now most of them are a, a week, some and then sometimes two weeks. Mm -hmm. And what it was, we went from um, Amsterdam. You know, in the Netherlands, and we ended up in Bucharest, Romania. Mm -hmm. okay. mm -hmm. Now, now, first of all, we started in Amsterdam, so I, we spent a few extra days in Amsterdam because Ronnie had never been to Amsterdam. I had been there in the early seventies. Yeah. Right? Okay. Uh, she had never been there, so we we had a great time. We walked all over Amsterdam, and we did all kinds of. We got, you know, it was just great. I mean, we got it to know it like we we know our backyard. Yeah. And then, so then we hop on a ship and we meet there two of our closest travel friends. Unfortunately, uh, the man just passed away about about six months, seven months ago. He was wow. great. He was about 10 years older than I was, but yeah. he was a multimillionaire and very well traveled and totally adventurous. I mean, he would he'd say, okay, Bill, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. We're going to go this route. See that darker, dark alley down there? Uh, he goes, I heard that there's a really great, you know, restaurant. He did. We, we did it in, did that in Malta one time. Wow! I, I'm walking. To, I'm thinking, holy Malta! What am I doing in Malta? Number one. Number yeah. Two, why are we walking down this dark alley? Yeah. This great fish, this great seafood restaurant. Mm -hmm. Well, we go in there. We had the best meal. We had the best. Time. The man was fearless. Okay. Fearless. Wow, that's awesome. But we met him on this trip, and the trip was called um, the I guess the Grand European something or other, or Grand European cruise, whatever, mm -hmm. and. Um, was with was with a company called talc so now of course we're on this cruise and um we're going all over the way so one of the things that was fascinating to me was uh as a young man you know the berlin wall was up okay? mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so i felt i would never you know we just could you couldn't go into these eastern european countries because they were communist and you know, it just was a problem mm -hmm. so one of the great things about the trip we went from we went from amsterdam and I went down. I guess I guess that was the the Rhine at that time. I forget what river. Anyway, but uh, I went going to all these, stopping all these different cities, and you know, and we hit. You know, we we're in like I don't know, uh, Serbia, Croatia, places like that. Be besides going to these other places, Germany and Austria, and things. And I had been to Germany before and Austria before, but we wound up go going to these Eastern European cities, like uh, uh, countries like Bulgaria. In mm -hmm. Romania, mm -hmm. Hungary, yeah. I never expected to see them in my lifetime ever. Yeah, okay? 
And I have to be honest with you, they were fascinating. Uh, yeah. I remember being in Bulgaria with, and there was a male, all male choir mm -hmm. singing in a cave that was, I guess it was like a, an Orthodox church of some sort. Yeah. And deep, deep, booming male voices that just echo throughout the country. Wow, I mean, that's that cool. Yeah, like, like I have friends who are Bulgarian and these places yeah. that you're they're saying, so it's interesting to me. Yeah, and this is my point, is that we go into these different places, like we were in, I forget how old we were, uh, Croatia, Serbia, I forget we were, but, you know, we're going into people's homes, the, the, the tour people had said, okay, we're going to get you into people's homes, mm -hmm. it's not going to go into some church, you know, I mean, you, you, you've seen one church, you've seen them all, really, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh, and of course, they, they, they're giving us their homemade brandy. You know? That's so cool, because you get a little glimpse into that country and that person's life. Yeah, and, and the point of it all is, uh, there's a guy uh, on the Create channel and some of the PBS channels. There's a travel, they have a lot of travel shows. And one of the guys is Joseph Rosendo. And he always ends his show by quoting Mark Twain about, Mark Twain would say that the travel is dispels, you know, bigotry and this, that, and the other thing. And, you know, basically by, by traveling, mm -hmm. you know, it expands your horizons Yeah, is, is the, the cliche phrase. Yeah. And it makes you less bigoted. Yeah. It makes you more tolerant. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then of course, and you know, you can appreciate this is you get to know a, a country by its cuisine too. Yeah. So you start yeah. to eat stuff that, oh my God, I've never seen this before. Mm -hmm. What is it that I'm eating? I mean, like Japan. Yeah. We were in Japan. Let me tell you something. Half, I would say we were in Japan for three weeks. We were on our, it was actually an ocean cruise, but we stopped and, you know. And they're, they're I mean, what they, what the Japanese do with food growing and production mm -hmm. and um, creativity with food. Yeah, and it's such a, such an art form. Yeah, it really is. I mean, and they mm -hmm. do everything. They're so artistic Precise, stuff, yeah uh, artistic i mean they, they, I, I mean i always tell the story that you know you, you know i had a, i had a peach in uh uh in in where the hell was i in tokyo or osaka wherever it was i had this peach it was like ten dollars for one peach. <laughs> okay? yeah yeah because it's i mean look yeah you know, japan's expensive anyway but well let me tell you something i almost drowned on my first bite it was so <laughs> juicy <laughs> So sweet and delicious. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It was okay. worth ten dollars, right? You better put now a couple of years later I'm watching there's some shows on Create Channel that I watch uh, usually on Sundays from ten to eleven. They have a half an hour show about the Tsukiki market, which is the biggest market in Tokyo for fish and everything else. I we were there. Okay. And then of course they have another half an hour show that they try to get you to go all over Japan and different mm -hmm. islands. Whatever. So anyway, they had a show on how they grow they how they grow different fruits and different yeah. vegetables and i saw the show on how they took care of peaches how they oh really peaches. and then i realized why that peach was, that i had was ten dollars for the peach okay mm -hmm. because what they do is they put them in individual sacks really bugs off them and and i mean they do stuff they, i mean can you imagine i don't know how many peaches are on a tree but they're yeah. wrapping things up so that they can't be uh, hurt by insects weather whatever and yeah yeah the, their production values on that wow is they're taking incredible. like grade a care of that peach yeah i mean they're labor intensive and they don't do this and they don't mm -hmm. do certain herbicides and insects. yeah there's a korean yeah. pear that's super expensive too and they care for this peach this pair so well. And then then when they deliver it to the supermarket, it's wrapped in like this beautiful like styrofoam. Each one yes, is wrapped. And, and, yes. And the Japanese, what they'll do, they give that those kinds of fruit fruits as gifts. Yeah. Yes. Expensive gifts. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So my, my thing about the traveling is this you go and I have I could talk about endless amounts of experiences throughout the world. Okay. And uh and that's a joy that mm -hmm. most people don't and luxury that most people uh, don't have. Okay? Yeah. Um, now, uh, in mainland, uh, the, I was in mainland China in 2007. Okay. And that was just, there was just getting, preparing for the Olympics there. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it was, they weren't finished yet with the, the giant birds nest, nest stadium that mm -hmm. they were going to use for the athletic events in, in, in China. And what was fascinating to me was 
first of all, now remember, this is that was 2007. So here we are at 2022. Yeah. I can't even imagine what China is like now. And I'll tell you yeah. what, they were so far ahead of us mm -hmm. okay, in certain kinds of uh, architecture uh, and some certain kind of technologies and stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, if I, can't, I can't, it must be unbelievable now. I'll give you a perfect case in point. They had bullet trains, okay? I mean, bullet train, if you've ever, we were on a bullet train there and a bullet train in Japan. Mm, I've never uh, taken I mean, one there. Oh, let me tell you something. The one in Japan, we went from, uh, I think we went from Osaka to Tokyo. Right? Yeah. The train's going like 225 miles an hour. Wow. It's quiet as a church. Wow. No vibration. And we're no vibration? A, no vibration. Wow. Okay. Uh, you know, you have a cup of cup of coffee or a cocktail in your hand. You don't even see any ripples. I mean, it's amazing. And then, and then you remember it, and you're, you're just scooting down, the, you know. And um, uh, we were in a first class car. It was luxurious. It was comfortable, and uh, it was it was shocking. I remember um, seeing Mount Fuji from the you know the train window. And I'm wow, thinking, that's I'm cool. Thinking, this is so cool. So now, of course, you know. <laughs> We don't have these in this country. Yeah. Okay? Uh, and we probably won't for a long time. Now, let me be honest with you. You know, in China or in certain other countries, they, their government says, you know what? Uh, if we're gonna, we need to build a train in a very, you know, this this direction. And anything that's in our way, we're going to have to get rid knock, of. It. Yeah, knock down. So now if here for, in America, right, he said, well, you know, people have individual rights to property and this, that, and the other thing. And so the whole big legal battle mm -hmm. to try to get something done to get, let's say, uh, a, a bullet train, you know, railway in. Yeah. But it's cause it's got mad, crazy expensive. Yeah. Okay? But when you have countries like China, that's all. Yeah, China country. will just, they'll claim like eminent domain or something like that. Well, they yeah, but I mean, yeah, but I mean, just knock you down. Yeah. yeah. Now he has, and, and he has a perfect example too. Uh, we went, we were in China, they were, the Yangtze River, okay, they were raising it. They were, they were, mm -hmm. they were doing was, they wanted to, they were building something called the Three Gorges Dam, which we went mm -hmm. to. It's mm -hmm. unbelievable, okay? And so what they do is, they, they raised the depth of the river, yeah. okay, 500 feet. Wow. 500 feet. Wow. Now, but in order to do that, there were these old little Chinese towns along the riverbanks. They flooded them. <gasps> and they flooded them. Oh, and my the God. Local, the natives, the locals were saying, oh, my God. You know, they had their ancient dead buried there. And yeah. Chinese government said, hey, look. Yeah. This we're doing God. this. We're doing this. This is the best. This is in, in mainland. This is in China's best interest economically. You know, yeah. And what they did, was they, they took every, they took these people from these, these cities that they were now going to obliterate and yeah. cover water mm -hmm. they built them new towns wow they built them new towns okay mm -hmm. and we went to one of them mm -hmm. and it was fascinating because the, these buildings these homes were brand spanking new wow brand spanking new solidly done they built these whole towns and they mm -hmm. were they were actually better than where they were living better streets and home on yards mm -hmm. uh i guess they paid them a certain amount you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but it was also fascinating how um, certain things didn't change. So, for example, we were in one home, and uh, all modern stuff inside. Yeah. Except we went when we went into the bathroom. They didn't have what we they didn't have really what we would call central plumbing. Oh they, they, no. They, no, they had uh, in this particular place they had what they used to call all like all the tourists we, we used to call them squatty potties yeah just, it was a hole in the ground yeah 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 hole in the ground, in, in yeah. this bathroom okay it wasn't yeah. really a flush toilet mm -hmm. also it was interesting you know a lot of these people had their own livestock like pigs yeah so the inside of the homes was modern and modern except for the bathroom in, in the backyard they had pig styes and you could smell it yeah 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 yeah. So, and I'm thinking, my God, you know, there's something, this is so, uh, I mean, to me, it was wildly interesting. Well, yeah, it's like a juxtaposition of worlds. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another thing that, that I, that was interesting too, is like the little kids they had. Mm -hmm. See the little, these little kids, male and female, and they were, you know, like, I don't know how old they were, 
I'm going to say five or six, right? Yeah. And they're running around the streets, everything else. They're cute as little buttons, okay? Yeah. Uh, but they all, if you look closely, they all had big holes in their shorts and in their pants. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, that's how they were house trained. In other words, they just pooped to that hole. Oh. Yeah. So in other words, like. They so they just go anywhere and just go poop and pee. Pretty much. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And I said, well, that's very interesting. I mean, I mean, that we would like, we go, you go. We would ga that. gasp. Yeah. Yeah. They were, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, I thought that was an interesting cultural thing. About well, yeah. I mean, it is because I told you, like, even for me, um, I came here when I was three years old, but I don't remember much of China until I went back there while I was in elementary and high school. I went back there three times. Right. And I even went back there when I was working in the garment industry too and uh -huh. went to the factory. So I've seen it changed. And just to see my own culture and see the difference between oh. America and China and how it was so like shacks and villages to like modern day, you know, roads. Now we have lights, now we have highways. Like yeah. it was really interesting to see the, um, the transformation of China. Now, again, I keep saying that we were there in 2007. Uh, now, and there's a reason for that because I mean, now I can't, I, I, like I said before, the, they have done, they must have done some amazing things in China. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, their roadways were just spectacular. They yeah, were yeah. spanking new. Mm -hmm. They had, I think they said in 1974, they had about a dozen cars. All of a sudden, now they got millions. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, they, uh, but my, so I spoke, speaking of cars, we were being driven from the airport in Beijing. Mm -hmm to at the time the uh, the best hotel in, in beijing which was yeah the, yeah this the palace in beijing I, mm -hmm. I we were there five nights i almost cried when i left it because i loved it <laughs> uh, no, i loved it yeah, I because mean, they're so nice and modern and they well, well, well yeah and, and for example they had these beautiful girls yeah uh, we know you know, as waitresses and stuff like that and we were there i ordered i guess we got there we had our had our first cocktail yeah thereafter even when the the serving staff was different. They knew what we drank. Mm. And so they would just say, you know, Mr. Would you like another one? You would you like yeah, well, would you like the same again? Yeah. Well, duh, yeah, okay. I'm right on. Yeah. I mean, they were so um organized Attentive. and they were so uh uh willing to be of mm -hmm. service and helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean you used to go, I think I told you the story uh personally but you used to go into these like uh, these gigantic uh, shopping centers steel mm -hmm. glass very very modern yeah. three four floors i mean it was amazing but yeah. you go into the clothing stores mm -hmm. and say well look you know i like i really like this but this you know the sizes in china they're made for people who are like half our size yeah half yeah half our easily yeah totally it you was know? astonishing when i realized that too i'm like oh my god i'm like fat <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm like I am that. I, I mentioned or, it in another, in another podcast about how it, the, the joke was about the elevators was that they that they could fit uh, they could fit let's say six uh, six Chinese and only four Americans. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. so I would it's probably be crazy. like a a triple XL. <laughs> Whatever. But I mean, but my point was that if so, I, I so I said, well, look, gee, I really like this 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 sweater, but I yeah, I need a bigger size. They literally would. Mm -hmm. They would break into a trap from behind yeah. the counter to run back into the inventory room to get you want what you it requested, and mm -hmm. they would trot back. They would yeah, yeah, yeah. Would run. And, and I told you why because you're white and well, you see dollar yeah, signs. Yeah, but you see, I don't know. I don't. I, I mean, <laughs> I'll be honest with you. I didn't think that way. I thought this is how they deal with patrons. no, no. This is how they deal with patrons. Right. I, and I always tell you, they. This is because you're white. <laughs> And they see dollars. All coming. right. If you want to be racist about it, fine. Well, because I saw it when I went there, you know, like they don't give you that same kind of treatment, you know, if you're Asian right. and especially if you're Asian American, because then now yeah. they look down on you for being too Americanized. Ah, well, he, you're but, not, you're not Asian enough. You're not Chinese enough. So then they look down on you. But here's how I knew the first day that mainland China was so different from what I had read it to be. Mm hmm okay and grew up understanding it to be yeah and i my comment was after i when i tell this story i'll say it to you now that it, th this was not my father's china my father was yeah. a world war ii vet and the whole thing yeah else. yeah and the red chinese a whole different deal that's a whole different thing exactly now uh, we're, we're being driven from the airport to the hotel i look out the window 
and I'm, you know, and it's, you know, there are stores, it's Beijing, it's a yeah. metropolis. Mm -hmm. And I see, as we're driving by, a car dealership. What astonished me was, uh, it wasn't a Ford dealership. It wasn't a, you know, Toyota. It was a Lamborghini. <laughs> a freaking Lamborghini. Lamborghini, yeah. I'm looking at minimally a quarter of a million yeah. bucks to buy a Lamborghini, okay? Yeah. And I'm mm -hmm. thinking, this is not my father's China. He'd freak, no, he'd freak no. out if he knew this. He'd say, you know, and uh, and of course, when we got to the Peninsula Palace, I could see why. You know, it was a, that's really a very, uh, it was a hotel for you know business types and you know American types who could afford it and things like that. Yeah. And but let's let's give China its due. They have over the past decade or so, two decades since I've been there, mm -hmm. they have they have raised millions and millions of their citizens into the middle class. Mm -hmm. okay? mm -hmm. And we were seeing kind of the beginnings of that while we were there. Uh, uh, we were being told by one of the guides, he said, uh, he was a Chinese guy, again. he said the car that most upscale, burgeoning middle class Chinese people wanted by way of a, a, a fancy car, a luxury car for them, mm -hmm. was, remember this is 2007, they said it was a Buick. They wanted really? a Buick. Yeah. That Buick? Was, Buick, yeah. Now, I, don't ask me why. All I'm saying to you, I, mean, I, don't, you know, I don't think of, it was, there was once a time when a Buick was a, considered to be. Yeah, a, I mean, a, long ago. A really sturdy car. And yeah, kind of, and but I, that's I, a long, yeah, that's a long time ago. But that was what they knew. They wanted to, and of course, uh, the other thing I was learning was. I feel that, like our parents had a Buick, possibly, an Oldsmobile or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then what I was learning was that, uh, by the way, that that the two biggest American um, franchises that they really were into, but they were expensive for the Chinese. At the mm -hmm. time. They were into Kentucky Fried Chicken. They loved Kentucky Fried Chicken. Went mm -hmm. crazy for Kentucky Fried Chicken, mm -hmm. and also Starbucks coffee. Okay? Mm -hmm. So now, let's let's move forward. Mm -hmm. We come back, and I'm thinking, and I was doing most, like a little bit of day trading in the stock market. I was retired, and everything. Else. Yeah, yeah. Did you invest in those? I well, here's what I had to make a decision. Do I go in the way? In, which one do I invest in? I know that's it's going to be. Remember, you got millions of people in China. Come yeah. on, yeah. So I said, okay, it was between I think uh, Yum Brands owned uh, Kentucky Fried Chicken. Uh, I said, nah, I'm gonna, I'll get some Starbucks. Yeah. So I bought a couple of hundred uh, dollars worth. It wasn't a lot. Yeah. Of uh, of. Uh, because at the time, I think the share was like fifteen or sixteen dollars a share here. Oh, okay. wow! Right. So that okay. was the beginning of it. Yeah. So know what it went up to, but when because I, I uh, my like hundreds I now or something. No, like I was like a hundred and twenty bucks or something. Yeah, hundred something. I mean, yeah. so I made out like a bandit on Starbucks. That's amazing. But, but what I'm what I'm trying to say though is, you know, when you go to places like that, you start yeah. to see what the culture is about and what people mm -hmm. want, what people think, and, if, and then and, it can help you with your stocks. Uh, well, I could, that's one part of it. That's not, I mean, I don't care about money, but I didn't do it for that. Yeah. But uh, but one of the things is, uh, that I just was astounded by, there were just certain things. For example, something like uh, construction. Yeah. Um, they they used to have so, they had so many people that they could use to work, Yeah. Uh, to get to work. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the, they were building these gigantic- And they structures. built so fast. They, well, here's how they did it. How they built, why they get it built so fast. They don't stop work for like after an eight hour day. It's 24 yeah. seven. They have their crews coming in and mm -hmm. they're putting those buildings up in no time flat. Yeah. But one of the things I, f I found really interesting, fascinating even, you know, we look at, you go into New York, New York is always being rebuilt from the ground up. I mean, there's construction every place in New York. Mm -hmm. And they have all the scaffolding, right? Yeah. And so they go with different kinds of wood and pulleys and things like that. Their scaffolding was made out of bamboo. Yeah, and it's, yeah, bamboo, mm -hmm. all over the place. Mm -hmm. There's different different diameters and different strengths. It's amazing. It was it was amazing. I was just shocked. I mean, my God, this is so this is so Asian. <laughs> you know, I mean, yeah. of course it's Asian. I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah. And then there's a story you have to tell us where you had the best Italian food. Oh God, we were in. I think it was Shanghai. It was in Shanghai, definitely. Mm -hmm. Shanghai became one of my favorite cities for a yeah. lot of reasons. Yeah. Because one side of it, they remember it was, it was they had to, there was a whole colonial uh, when Britain the British were there, and trying to colonial you know, colonizing a lot of China and Hong Kong and this stuff like that, 
uh, and they call it the Bund, okay? And so on that one side of the river was the Bund, and you see all this kind of British colonial looking type uh, architecture, you know, sturdy, big sturdy buildings, concrete, whatever. Mm -hmm. And uh, then on the opposite side of the river, it was all brand spanking new, mm -hmm. and they called that the Pudong, the Pudong. The Pudong is this, this, this high end business uh, section that yeah. was built across the river. Mm. Across the river. Mm -hmm. And we and what was fascinating about that was they said, "Oh, look, the, you, you can go underneath the. They have a they have a walk walking gizmo. A walk, you know, you can walk underneath the river. Wow! And go from you know Shang, one section of Shanghai, and then you go to the Pudong. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking, okay, well, you know, and it's all going to be and, and like they had a lot of underground walkways in China, mm -hmm. and so especially in you know Shanghai and Beijing and stuff." And they're all well lit, very safe, twenty four seven. You know, we don't have to worry about. Not, not like our New York subway. Oh underneath. God, no! I'm telling you, please. That's another. <laughs> one. Yeah, real. You realize, of course, that people, especially now from Asia, are afraid to come to the United States because a, we're gun nuts in this country, all over the country, and b, now this is thanks to the, the idiot Trump and his 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 racist scumbag acolytes. Okay, uh, you know, now there's a whole every anti-asian thing oh yeah well, anti -Asian, yeah, oh, the, yeah. the the the, uh, the pandemic was causing a lab in china and so let's blame the chinese i mean come yeah. on yeah there was a lot of like asian hate going around in uh, new york city absolutely so anyway but now so so we go to it we go down the steps and i'm thinking okay it's going to be a pretty pretty long walk under the river it's a pretty wide river yeah and we get down to the bottom and we see gondolas that fit about 20 to wow people big gondolas yeah and what it was gondolas underneath the wow yeah yeah now listen to this we go into the gondola and this couple you know and it, the place the tunnel is all lit up and then as you go i think it, it the and the gondola would go at a like a walker's pace like three and a half to four miles an hour yes yeah. it wasn't speeding <laughs> the tunnel right yeah and what it did was it was like a disney world ride wow. all, all lights and colors and music and really i was unbelievable i'm thinking what the hell Who, yeah. i never expected that this so is they made it into like a destination kind of like treat absolutely and i was i was just flabbergasted i was flabbergasted there were mm -hmm. so many cool things in china at the time now mm -hmm. i could only again i could only say it it must be lord knows what's been going on in there with in terms of architecture in terms of uh you know more bullet trains uh they had these uh, i remember when we left the airport they had a brand new airport i was mm -hmm. just huge okay yeah and then of course speaking of airports their airports were all pretty much brand spanking new they were clean they were yeah. well lit they had big huge runways and then of course yeah. You come back to New York and you come into a place like JFK or LaGuardia, it's like yeah. flying into a slum. It was yeah. horrible. It was yeah. horrible. In fact, you know who said that? Oh. Uh, once it was uh, Joe Biden when he was still, I don't know whether he was a senator then or I guess maybe he was vice president. Oh, he, really? Yeah, he flew into, I guess he was, had been in Asia and he flew in to LaGuardia and he said, my God, it's like a slum here. They, <laughs> and they finally, something to that effect, I, did, mm -hmm. I think he did use the word slum. Yeah. And, and so, of course, now LaGuardia, they've just done a humongous, many billion dollar, billion dollar re redo because they yeah. were just terrible. Okay? Yeah. So so that mainland China trip uh, between the, the, the flooding of the Yangtze, 500, bring it up 500 feet, the, the Three Gorges Dam, seeing what they all, what they did all over the place. And by, of course, in Shanghai, one of the best Italian restaurants I have ever been in any place. That is hysterical. You got it in Asia. <laughs> then I got it in Shanghai. I was mm -hmm. shocked with even another better product. than food that you've gotten Italian food in Italy. Uh, it was definitely comparable. Mm. Uh, definitely comparable. I mean, the Asians that. know the but Asians I, know. You know, you know this too. I'll, I mean, let's face it. What they were also doing that. Let's not be. I don't want to be disingenuous here. I mean, obviously they had hired some fantastic chefs. Yeah, they were doing. Of course, that. of course. Okay. But if, but that's the point too that they were. He was probably uh, from Italy. <laughs> yeah, well, but what the Chinese would say about their culture because we could say oh they were communist. Yeah, but it, but they would say um, that they were much more capitalistic, it's, it, that they had capitalism but with Chinese characteristics. Mm -hmm. That's how they would phrase it. Mm -hmm. We are capitalistic but with Chinese characteristics. There was a certain amount of control there. There's a certain amount of you know, government 
finagling. Okay. Yeah. yeah. And by the way, the Chinese government is just as corrupt as any other government. Let's yeah. Yeah. Totally. Totally. Okay? So that. So that. I'm talking about China, but mainly China. I mean, I, I, the my most recent, the last trip we took was in 2017. Was to Tokyo. Was to Japan. Oh. Okay. And then after that, I came back, and we were supposed to go to two more trips, and I had to cancel one because of my stroke. Yeah. Uh, that was a that was a cruiser in the Scottish Isles, but we had been to Scotland, which is, that's another story. Okay. Oh, Scotland hey, sounds nice. Uh, I love, first of all, you got to love Scotland and you got to love the Scottish people. And yeah. by the way, I say the same thing about the Irish. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Um, we can, we can switch, we can switch countries here. Um, one of the fascinating things about both Scotland and Ireland, okay. Mm -hmm. There, they used to say, oh, the English food is horrible, but you know, what's great. It's gotten better because again they've gotten chefs. They're you know they're into the big global cuisine thing. Right? Yeah, but the Irish and the English have phenomenal, phenomenal dairy products. Mm -hmm. You want butter? Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the butter in Ireland is golden. Mm. It's creamy. It's flavorful. Why? They got these cows grass. They're all grass grass fed cows. Yeah, their butter, their milk is. Yeah, I don't drink milk. But their cream, I had a little bit of cream and like, mm -hmm. desserts and stuff. Mm -hmm. Outstanding, outstanding. Uh, like again, too. They, you know, I mean, let's face it. The the, the, the British are into the and the Irish are into the lambs. They're into. You can't get bad lamb in those countries. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, so they have there's a, the quality of their foodstuffs and their dairy products are astounding. You know. Yeah. So then, of course, and you see how how people are uh, very friendly. Yeah. Really now again, uh, we're not talking about like as one of the things that Ronnie and I have learned to do is to break away from. If we're with a tour group, we break away, okay, mm -hmm. and we make sure that we'll go to someplace like we'll go someplace local to eat. Yeah. Different kinds of things, right? And that's how you meet people. That's how you yeah. get. To be, that's how uh, you hang out the locals and get some stories from them. And I, I, I'll tell you perfect. That's another thing. Uh, we we're, we're in. Strat we're in Stratford where you know, they talk about Shakespeare and Stratford on Avon and stuff. Mm -hmm. We go into a pub for lunch, just the two of us. And I start talking to, he, some guy overheard me talking about the first time I ever ate a scotch egg. Yeah. It was, it was in a pub in, in it was a pub in uh, London, mm -hmm. in the theater district by Chelsea mm -hmm. and stuff. And a scotch egg, if you don't know what it is, is it's a, it's, they take an egg, a hard boiled egg, and they wrap it in sausage. Mm -hmm. okay? And then they roll it in seasoned breadcrumbs and stuff. And, and then, then they, they fry it? Fry it. Mm. I mean, it's a great, great. I, that sounds amazing. <laughs> you know, it is amazing. And it's a great bar drink. Let me tell yeah. you. In a yeah. pub, I feel like I need to make it. I have some ground meat at home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you try it. In fact, I once made one. And my uncle, we, um, I remember my, we had, had my uncle over for dinner, my mother's youngest uh, sibling. And we, the Italians, that's a, we going into Italy now. Uh, it, from my mother's side, my mother's side of the family, they used to, they came from a place called Oscule Piceno, okay? Mm -hmm. Little town. Even now, they, they don't have tourists there really because they have no big hotels, everything else. But one of the things they're known for was a, a stuffed olives. Mm -hmm. giant, oh, yes. I feel like you told me that. That sounds yeah, good. They take these giant green olives. Yeah. And, they cored them they, like in a curl they they they, they have to my mother was Ronnie's good at it too yeah. they would make like a curl a cue get the pit out yeah okay, then stuff it they had different kinds of stuffings and they you'd, they'd stuff it and then reform the olive okay mm -hmm. It'll be, so they so they'd have this like like a curl a cue yeah form it yeah and then you'd do the same thing then you'd wrap it you you dip it in flour first then egg and then seasoned breadcrumbs. Okay. And then fry it? And then fry it. Oh, that sounds uh, amazing. Didn't you say uh, that there was a restaurant near you that makes this or no? No, no, no. Well, we, in fact, we, no, that, there were certain places that I've sorted to make. In fact, we once had it on, on a, on a, on a, uh, on a, we were, uh, first class and all, on an all Italia, Italia plane. It was a, in fact, the plane was only two weeks old mm -hmm. and ha they had as one of their dishes, stuffed olives oh that sounds not amazing as, i have to say not as good as mama used to make yeah. <laughs> at, at, but you know they they were trying they to try they tried well, they would try yeah and they were trying to be very authentic because it was an italian yeah. airline and everything else yeah yeah but anyway so what, going back to my uncle i came out with one of these like we made scotch eggs and of course yeah they're like 
five times, six times the size of the stuffed olives. Yeah. I said, hey, that, I said look, I said, I worked real hard to find like the biggest olive I could find. It's here. Mm -hmm. This is it. He looked at it and goes, well, come on. You got to be I said, ah, hey, Unc, come on. You got to have this. Uh, trust me. Bite into the sucker. You, what do you, you know. They have to remember that the, that the stuffed olives, they're salty. Plus the stuffing, stuffing mm -hmm. is salty. Yeah. So if you, I told my friend uh, recently, the seized at a bar. I said, you know, you can make, if you can make these things, man, and, and serve You them, make a lot of money. I make a, a, a boatload. I said, because people, all they want to do is they're salty. It's, they it's salty, drink, they're thirsty, and, and they'll keep drinking. They'll, keep drinking. Mm -hmm. they'll drink, they'll, they'll drink, they'll drink your bar dry, okay? Yeah. So anyway, so my uncle couldn't believe it. But I, then, of course, I gave it to him and I had to say, yeah, this is a, this is a scotch, scotch egg. Scotch egg, yeah. Gave him the whole big thing, you know? So anyway, so I'm talking about the, about the scotch eggs, and there's a guy at the bar and he's listening to me mm -hmm. okay. i guess i must have been talking to my wife because we yeah. were with her alone and he starts to smile anyway so anyway we started saying ah, I, he said because uh so i said oh yeah you know about the scotch eggs are you live here because yeah he said so we, we start to we start to strike up a conversation mm -hmm. and he says yeah well i used to teach part-time and we so we're getting to know each other but here's my point about when you meet the locals yeah we was trying to find a particular, uh, I, think, I think it was a, either a particular museum or a particular, I don't know what it was. We were looking for something. He said, hey, he said, look, he said, I think I even bought, I think I even bought, a, bought him a, a, an ale or something. He said, hey, I'll, I'll take you there. Oh. So the guy broke his day. Mm -hmm. he stopped. He said, you know what, here, let me, I'll give you an ale. Oh, you. that's awesome. And I'm thinking, you know what? Uh, that's really great. I mean, yeah, yeah. People are so willing yeah. to be uh, helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And again, it's a lovely thing when you start to see people, you know what? Uh, yeah. Even half a chance, you know, foreign country, these people say, well, yeah. I mean, that's enough. the whole point of this podcast is to be open minded, travel, um, experience yeah. new things, yeah. and meet new people, and don't be a racist. <laughs> well, this is, I mean, this is how you, this is how you get to, uh, to, to not be intolerant and big. Yeah, yeah. Because you start to see that most people are just like you are. Well, know, all the same. Pretty much. You yeah, know, pretty much. all the same. And, uh, but what, what makes them interesting is partly how they dress and partly what their cuisine is like. Yeah. And, I mean, I go going back to Japan, I, I mean, when I tell you half the time, more than half the time, we didn't know what the hell we were eating. Mm -hmm. It tasted great. It looked spectacular. I mean, they yeah. They come out. You, they come out with a plate, man. It's gorgeous. I it's mean, beautiful. It's, it's such yeah. artistry the way they prepare it in Japan. Yeah. It's beautiful. And so, uh, and of course, I remember we went into a place with my now, with my friend who this, this is deceased friend. His name is Orwin. We go into Japan and we go into the. We got off the beaten path. We go into like this. this there was like I guess like a market area, and we go into. We had to walk down a bunch of steps, and we go into this place for lunch. Mm -hmm. Okay. And of course, no one speaks English. <laughs> only white people in the restaurant. Okay? Yeah. And yeah. so, of course, now, of course, we're like, just like when people from other countries come here, they have to look at the pictures and they got to point to the pictures and say, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and of course, the Japanese uh, people in the restaurant are laughing hysterically because they realize we don't know what the hell we're doing. We don't know yeah. what the hell we're So, so when we're pointing, and of course, now, you know, we're a typical American. So, well, we, how much you know, we're going to have a, a substantial amount of food for lunch, right? Mm -hmm. Well, we get a bowl of noodles. The bowl was God. You could dive into it and swim. You know, the, the heat <laughs> was, and, then, and then and they're laughing because they're realizing these Americans, man, they don't. They know don't them. realize. They don't have no idea. Mm -hmm. So then we said, well, look, you know, we're going to need beer, right? So we we point, we ordered a beer. It's like what are those like a 40 ounce like 40 ounce beers you know kind of thing wow yeah i mean and this is like one for each of us some of that yeah <laughs> my wife can't drink 40 ounces of beer yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so you have this but, giant ball of soup all this beer right and i forget what else but we had the best time that's the awesome best time. That's but awesome. and even there was i mean when i tell you there was no one who spoke english no one not even the owner of the restaurant uh, was a woman so you're just picking at the pictures none of the I servers yeah, yeah it was just i mean they could have charged us you know yeah thousand dollars for lunch we wouldn't have had it we wouldn't have yeah, yeah like food. that's fine okay here's my money <laughs> but we but we laughed from beginning to end we had the uh, best time. well that's what it's all about it's laughter it's friendship yeah. it's, it's community and then, you know and, yeah and of course the japanese people had they got a kick out of us yeah. but i always tell people when i about when they came back from japan it took me two almost two to three weeks 
to stop bowing whenever I talk yeah. to people. Mm -hmm. you, go, you do the bowing, the whole nine yards, you know. Mm -hmm. But, um, uh, and uh, I also enjoyed, like, as much as I'm, you know, I'm not a religious guy. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the more, I've always studied uh, Asian literature and read it and also culture. Yeah, yeah. And I'm so, I'm, I was pretty hip to things like, like in Japan, they've got a lot of Buddhist temples and they have a lot of uh, shim, uh, Shinto shrines. Sh mm -hmm. Shintos have shrines and the Buddhists have temples. Okay. Mm -hmm. And they're really fan kind of fantastic. I always enjoyed the Shinto. Yeah, they're beautiful. Just the architectural structure yeah, of them. But are also, also the rituals surrounding. Yeah. Like the Shinto, when you go to a Shinto shrine, you go in, and in fact, when I used to have, I have garden, when I have the garden tours here, I set mm -hmm. up, the, I set it up in the front to be like a Shinto thing. I, oh. wood, I have a wooden bucket with a mm -hmm. wooden rail. Mm -hmm. And when you go to a Shinto shrine, you know, it's, they have a purification ritual where you take it, you take the ladle in your left hand and you wash your right hand and then you rinse off, the, then you switch hands. And so now you kind of purified whatever. Okay. And then mm -hmm. you clap, then you clap twice to the you know to the gods and mm -hmm. let them know you're there and you know I, I mean you put a little coin into the bucket you know yeah and then and then you do, you go in there and you do your meditation or whatever and you kind of do everything and then you do the clapping in reverse i mean yeah. i i enjoyed all that stuff i got yeah you know, yeah yeah those things are always beautiful it's also interesting to see people and it was true when we were in um, in vietnam uh especially we were north and south vietnam uh going into um i guess that that in vietnam i guess it was a buddhist temple i found it fascinating to see people on their knees praying and meditating to a different deity mm -hmm. in other words it was and by, by the way buddha would have been upset buddha was not he'd be the first one to tell you no i'm not divine okay? yeah yeah but we humans like to make everybody into something more than what they probably should be but anyway um but we want to believe in something yeah so yeah but to see them like basically worshiping yeah in a different kind of religious space to a different kind of really religious theater i just thought mm -hmm. it was fascinating yeah and what it says to me is human you like you just mentioned it human nature human beings need to do stuff like that yeah they want to believe in something because otherwise they just feel lost they just want something higher than themselves yeah and i, I and then the issue this is where it gets profound is, is it's be, is it because um it helps them feel less insignificant yeah alone and alone Mm -hmm. Right. And uh, lots of people need that. I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I understand it. Yeah. Um, I. I'm respectful of how do I say I'm respectful of the impulse. Mm -hmm. I can still make fun of all kinds of religious stuff all the time because yeah. I just think that if you if you look at it objectively you're going, come on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, for example, I, I talked to you about, you know, with the, the Shinto purification ritual before you go into the shrine. Mm -hmm. the well, you know, Roman Catholics, for example, before you walk into the church, uh, I remember as a kid, you they had the holy water on each side of the entrance, and you would dip your fingers in it, and then you do the sign mm. of the cross and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Well, okay, so that's another purification ritual with water. Yeah. Of course, <laughs> if they use a pandemic, I'm not touching that. It's like a giant bowl of virus. <laughs> Germs. <laughs> yeah, it's like, are you kidding me? That's the yeah. I'm not putting my fingers in the holy water bowls. That's mm. out. Those days yeah, are over. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Those yeah. days are over, but I think <clears throat> I think that it's one of the things about when you travel to different places to see what their rituals are. The different you know? ones, different yeah. but all the same, possibly. Well, there's similarities. There's no mm -hmm. question because the human nature. Um, this is where uh, I think it was Carl Jung. He talked about the collective unconscious. Yeah, you know, yeah. And how human beings need to process information in certain ways. And they do it certainly metaphorically. That's why we have so many kinds of stories and so many stories. This goes back to Joseph Campbell mm -hmm. last week's uh, podcast about, uh, you know, uh, myth and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, there you are, the hero with a thousand faces. They're all the yeah. same hero. About, yeah. about how. But all he, the different faces of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. How, mm -hmm. how, he has the journey, you know. Yeah. Um, it's, it's separation, initiation, and return. Okay, mm -hmm. separate from your old life. You initiate it into a new experience mm -hmm. in your life, and then when you and the hero is here, hero because he 
survives all that and is triumphant, then he returns to tell other people mm -hmm. in his community or his family or his tribe or whatever that, oh, I did this. I took the risk. Mm -hmm. I left. I was initiated into something new. I, I triumphed. And now I'm back, back to tell you, you can do it too. You can do it too. And here's how I did it. Yeah. And I think that that's part of what we do as parents. That's part of what mm -hmm. we do as teachers. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, and say, look, I got to this point and yeah. I'm going to, uh, and I'm going to explain to you how I did it. And no, mm -hmm. don't be afraid. You're going to be a little fra fearful. That's okay. Mm -hmm. It's normal. Mm -hmm. But if you're right, have some confidence and you know, you, 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 you know, you, you will be, you'll find that you'll be ready at that time mm -hmm. for that initiation. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, Ooh, thunder. And so that's wow, really that was loud thunder. Yeah, we get it. We've been like this for the last day or two. So at any rate, yeah, I think that this is one of the things that's that's beautiful about traveling. Um, uh, I guess I mean, I could talk to you. I have so many places. I've been to Hawaii, for example. Yeah. Well, you know, but, but that's the beautiful thing about chatting with you is that now you're on these podcasts, spreading the wit and wisdom of all the things you've learned to tell people, listen, I've gone through all of these lessons sure. and let me tell you the stories so you yeah. will understand and you can get through your trials and tribulations as well. See? Well, I mean, like, for example, you know, uh, we went to, we're going back to Japan again. We went to this island called Sakurajima. Mm. Sakurajima. Now, mm -hmm. it's a sakura, sakura in Japan, Japanese means cherry blossom. Mm -hmm. right? And jima, that ending jima means island. So if you, there's a, lots of, of, you'll hear lots of Japanese places. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That end in jima. Yeah. One of the things about sakura jima is that, that when we were there, it's a, it's a volcanic island. Mm -hmm. okay? So <laughs> the thunder reminded me. We go um, to show you how things, you know. Connect absolutely winds up and so we started hiking up the volcano uh -oh. up that up the hill and all of a sudden it gets noisy all of a sudden we feel under and yeah and we're going uh-oh it's starting to erupt now it's not really a, yeah but it's erupting but in other words it's not like it kind of it's kind of a relatively normal thing but still in all, you know, uh, those of us who are a little wiser <laughs> said, maybe we should stop going up and maybe start yeah. going back down again. Go back down, yeah. But here's what was interesting about it. You could see it. Now, we were looking up. but It must have been two-thirds of the way up. All right. And, and I mean, we look up and we could see all the smoke, you know, billowing and belching out of the volcano. Okay? Yeah. And, the, it, and, of course, the wind was behind us. It was blowing all the stuff of mm -hmm. the ash and everything else away from us yeah so now we we're, we're kind of you know getting down you know to the, we get down to the bottom of it and everybody was i mean the the, the japanese on the island i guess that we used to it they were kind of relaxed it wasn't like they would say oh <laughs> like oh this is fine like, yeah they weren't kind of saying oh my god it's going to be another pompeii we let's yeah. get the hell out of here right yeah 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 so what happens we wind up uh because we were tired of walking and our feet were hurting and everything else mm -hmm. we, they said okay come on we're gonna we're gonna go to this this little onsen here and you can soak now the onsen are these natural uh you know hot springs mm, nice okay? and they have them all over japan and wow. they, they you know they're, they're like natural hot tubs yeah yeah that's amazing so of course you know you know captain willie is always ready to doff his duds <laughs> and uh, you know <laughs> Pop into some some warm soothing water, which is yeah. what we did. We for about a half an hour or so. Mm -hmm. and, oh, and that's lovely. It was great. So then, what, oh, that, so that, but the cool part is, we now go back to the ship, okay? And, and, and it was a we go on only like only small ship cruises. We don't go on these big ships. Mm -hmm. The ship, I mean, they have ships now that three to five thousand people. It's like a city. Forget that. Yeah, know. yeah. Those are scary. Yeah, but we the ship only handled handled about two hundred people max. Okay? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there was a bow, there was a bar in the bow, and there's a bar in the stern, and you know, mm -hmm. and there's a main bar in the main room. So there were three different bars. Yeah. But uh, we 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 liked the bar on on the stern of the ship. Mm -hmm. And of course, what was really cool about that, as we we're having our cocktails, you could see the volcano. I have pictures of it someplace. Oh, the, that's cool. The volcano, you know, spewing out its smoke and wow. Air. And we were as just, you're like. Yeah, going and, away and, from and, it. And then again, what again? The good news was, the, mm -hmm. we were 
upwind of it. We were, in other words, we were yeah. blowing in the opposite direction. Yeah, yeah. So we were happy to to uh, go seaward away yeah. from the volcano. Away from all of the smoke and everything but, coming out of it. But I mean, it's stuff like that that you, most people never experience that stuff. Yeah, I mean, it sounds beautiful. I have to add it to, you know, I mean, Japan has definitely been one of my bucket lists, you know, so. Yeah, I, I think it's, it's probably one of the cleanest, mm -hmm. safest, yeah, most interesting, diverse countries in terms of cultural rituals and food yeah. you'll ever go to. I yeah, mean, I love all kinds of Asian food, so. Yeah, and that, this is it. But I mean, it's just, and of course, I love the architecture. Like when you go to Japan, mm -hmm. <laughs> I remember waking up the first morning after we got there. I look out the window. I forget we were in a hotel or something, and we're on the ground floor. It was actually it wasn't even a hotel. It was more like a, an inn or B and B. But I look out the window and I mm -hmm. say to my wife, who's still in the rack, I said, oh "My God," I said, "It just looks. It looks like Japan's supposed to look." Yeah, you know, yeah. The, the trees and the architecture and things yeah. like that. I say, "Oh my God, this is the way." Yeah. Just as you've seen it on pictures, it on pictures, it felt just like it. Oh yeah, that's correct. Mm -hmm. the, the international travel, plus I think that people in this country should—that's one part of what they need to do mm -hmm. to stop get this insular. America is the greatest country. Yeah, yeah. Experience America, other things. Yeah. Amer look, America is a great country in its way, mm -hmm. and like other countries, it sucks in its way. There's no such thing as a perfect country with a perfect government. You know, or a perfect person. Sure. I mean, America has been very good to me. Mm -hmm. And again, I've been very good to the United States. Okay. I'm, and as a person, I have every right constitutionally to criticize it as I need to criticize it and mm -hmm. its politicians. Uh, I go to other places. I mean, for example, uh, the sin in this country, besides racism, is that we don't have universal health care for our citizens. Yeah. And we, and we, and we, beat our chest oh we're the richest country in the world oh really well if we're the richest country in the world why don't we take care of our citizens give them universal health care they have it all around the world yeah and i've experienced it in different countries guess what it's great yeah it's great okay mm -hmm. so i mean look you know there, there are things wrong with it just like there's wrong with every system in any country but mm -hmm. it's still better than losing your house uh because you can't afford to pay your medical bills yeah Duh. yeah you know? exactly exactly but uh, i i mean i i just can't for example, for example, uh, I'll do sometimes of a morning. Uh, Rhino will come down, and I always make I'll make breakfast usually on a, a big breakfast on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of having a piece of toast, we'll have like maybe I know she likes me to make waffles for her, or, you know, every once in a while, or yeah, make bacon and eggs. But lots of times she'll come down and goes, uh, uh, you know, she'll know what it is. She goes, you making spam this morning? <laughs> now. If you've ever been in Hawaii, which I spent. Yeah, I, I went to Hawaii. I love spam. Yeah, well, that's my point. You know, they, that became very popular during yeah. World yeah. War II and thereafter. Mm -hmm. And so, like, you know, go, going to a, a restaurant or a, a diner, like, you know, spam and eggs, man. I mean, that's that's so Hawaiian. Yeah, yeah, I love spam. I still, I have a whole bunch of spam. During, like, pandemic, yeah, I'm does. like, I need to buy a whole thing of spam. <laughs> I love I love having I love spam. spam in the cake. Even yeah. like spam with rice and seaweed like Hawaiians do. I love that. Well, this is my point, though. You see, you go to a place and all of a sudden you pick up a local cul culinary habit. Yep. You know? And that's what I do. And I remember I spent three months in Hawaii serving the heavies and, you know, on the North Shore and stuff. Yeah, that's amazing. And on the, I surfed all over the island. And, of course, that was one of my favorite breakfasts was that I have spam and eggs, you know. Spam and eggs, yeah. Uh, then, of course, I have what they called a paniolo breakfast, which was kick, which was a uh, corruption of the word hispaniola. Mm -hmm. And, of course, the paniolos uh, are the Hawaiian cowboys, okay? mm -hmm. especially on the big island. Uh, and But but the paniolo, bre paniolo breakfast is a huge breakfast. Does it have, like, gravy and all this stuff? It's like a whole thing, right? Yeah. I think I saw but it you, on, like, a travel channel. But, yeah, but you know what that's like going back to now Europe, okay? You go to England. And they have the giant, what the hell do they call it? They have a name for it. They have this big country breakfast, mm -hmm. big English breakfast. Yeah. And you got sausages and you got yeah. toast and you got. Yeah. And you got, it's like a hungry have, man breakfast. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I, I, I can't remember that they have a name for it. Okay? Yeah. And I had it twice when I was in England. Yeah. The, the oh, well, yeah. You'll have to give me the name. <laughs> you know, yeah. But what I'm saying is that. That certain cultures have certain similarities. They yeah. go by different names. The stuff on the plate may even be be different. Yeah. But, but the concept's the same. 
Mm -hmm. Because you Mm -hmm. have all these, like in England, especially out where it's away from the cities, you know, they're doing a lot of, they're big in agriculture. They're doing a lot of, they're up early. They're feeding the cows. They're, you know, they're doing. Yeah, they need a big breakfast because they're going to be out taking care of, doing all this manual labor, right? But it's one of the great joys of travel to learn about these things and experience these things. And the other issue to on which we're going to end is that it's always great and wise and um, respectful to yeah. learn as much of the language. And the culture, right? In the, uh, well, and that's how you learn the culture, by learning the language. Mm-hmm. Okay? Mm-hmm. So, for example, you start to see how they view stuff. I think I mentioned it to you before. Uh, like a lot of the, a lot of the uh, romance languages, Italian, French, mm-hmm. whatever, mm-hmm. they're very, in their way, very poetic. All potatoes. Did I tell you that story? Yes, yes. Yeah, it sounds so elegant, right? Yeah, we say potatoes. It's a, it's an, it's in the dirt. It's yeah. Like, it's just like yeah, whatever. Yeah, but like you, yeah, you bring it home. You know, you got to wash them off. Didn't then, you say it was like the jewel of the soil or no, something? They call, it's called the, they, they call them. Uh, uh, pom pom de terre, pom de terre. Yeah, yeah. Pom meaning apple. They call the potatoes are apples of the earth. Yeah, like that's beautiful. Like we it treat potatoes like whatever. Yeah, but they're dirty. They're dirty. Beautiful. They're in, they're in the dirt. They're kind of disgusting. We have to wash them. Yeah. Off. But yeah. they think of them as apples of the earth. The that's fruit, beautiful. They're the fruit of the earth. Okay. That's so, beautiful. And, and and I used to know all kinds of stuff like about the Italians are the same way about fruit. Yeah. Yeah. So they they'll have lots of these. A lot of their phraseology is poetic about stuff, okay? Mm-hmm. And you don't, unless you're there and you don't learn bits of the language. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, now, for example, in now one place I always wanted to go was India. Mm. And, uh, we twice we tried to get to Africa, but because of terrorism, we had a, we couldn't. We were going with other people. They didn't want. To, they were afraid to go. We didn't go. I wanted to go to India. My wife never did. Okay, but uh, just the whole think about like people who take go to yoga they'll say oh you know namaste right and they have their hands together oh namaste namaste yeah Mm -hmm. and so so and what that really means how they really translate it is is that the god the divinity the god in me Mm -hmm. greets and respects the divinity and the god in you i love that i love that i mean that's a beautiful that's a beautiful notion so then Mm -hmm. when you go to visit yeah home you are not just the guest, but you're a divinity visitor. Mm, I love that. That's beautiful. To be res- yeah, to be respected as such. And I've known a number of Indian students and families that you know that's exactly how they would treat you. You know. Yeah. yeah. So I think that if the lesson we get once more time, going back to last last podcast, is that it's the journey, not the destination. It's yeah. the journey that educates you. It's the journey that enlightens you, yeah. warms your heart, mm-hmm. uh, instructs you. you know? And this, and thank you so much. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs> well, Namaste. <laughs> and uh, and uh, next time you're going to tell me, gee, I, I think after we'll leave, uh, I might want to ask you to, I may want to give you a talk. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me again on this weekly uh, podcast. And uh, we'll see you again next week. Yes. You stay well. Stay safe. Okay. I will. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye.